Here are my secrets to flawless piping, adding boning, putting in strong grommet, and replacing hoodie string. Hi everyone, welcome back to Blueprint DIY, where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today, I'm super excited to be bringing you a tutorial, showing you like several very valuable tips, but all in all, we are going to turn a hoodie into one of those corset hoodies that are going all over TikTok. I have been loving seeing them. And today I'm gonna to show you my version. So we're gonna start off with this Dartmouth hoodie that I thrifted for $3. Well, I've been asking for me to do a hoodie corset tutorial. We have already done a tutorial on how to make your own corset pattern. And you can make your pattern any kind of way that you want um, when you're making this corset pattern. It doesn't have to specifically have like this cup and this piece and this piece. It could be like a double cup, like a cup all the way around. But this is just how I did mine. And so go back to that video and you can make your own corset pattern. First off, we are going to try this on and figure out where the crop needs to be. So I'm really glad I uh, tried it on because I just assumed it would be underneath the college, but it's actually like right underneath the Dartmouth. So we're going to make a curve kind of like that. And we'll move that to the side. I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I need as much fabric as possible. I actually might be able to use this again too. So I'm gonna try to keep as much of this as possible too. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the edge binding off. Okay, we're gonna put that to the side. Then we are going to go ahead and knock this off. All right, so we have this piece loose. I'm going to just cut it off. All right, so I'm gonna cut it down the sides and cut these pieces out. This piece, I always cut last because I like to fit it on me before I even cut this piece because sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer, depending on the stretch of the fabric. So I'm not going to cut this piece yet. I'm gonna just take this uh, fabric and move it to the side. Now, everything that I just cut, I want to cut out of this green fabric as too because that's gonna be my lining. All right, so I have the rest of this for the back panel when I need it. All right, so now let's put this line together. You can see I do have a dart in my cup piece. So I'm gonna mark that with pins. There, there, and then I'll mark the top of it with the So the first thing we wanna do is to sew the darts in those cups. And then we're just gonna find our pencil mark marks, fold it so that they match up, and then fold the other end where the pin was and kind of curve towards that mark. And there we have our dart. Now the next thing we want to do is sew the cups to the side bodice pieces. But we are using seam binding, I mean not seam binding, piping. So now I can show you how I sew this on. So recently I had a thrift challenge and I wanted to make a corset and I wanted to add piping and I did not have the black piping that I wanted. So that gave me the challenge of making my own piping. And so today I'm releasing two videos at the same time, another, a separate video to show you how to make your own piping. So if you do not want to buy your own piping, you want to make it, then you can watch that right now. We're going to lay this like this, lay this on top. Now you can, if you're new to piping, you can go ahead and sew this on first and then sew the next part on. So you would kind of straighten that out and sew that down. But I am going to do both at the same time. And I'm going to show you how I do that and what foot helps me to do that. We will be using a blind stitch foot or a blind hem foot. And I love this foot for this because it has this little notch opening in it and it is adjustable. So depending on the 
size of your piping, you can adjust it to whatever size. I'm gonna make it the biggest because this piping is huge. I'm gonna put that on. This is a snap, universal snap foot. I moved this layer so that you can see. We're going to put the piping part under the space, the hole. And we're gonna move our needle to right at the edge of the piping. All right, so since I'm doing both layers at the same time, I can feel my piping underneath, make sure that's where I want it to be. I'll put my needle down to make sure, and we're gonna line everything up. And now we can go ahead and sew it. All right, let's see how it turned out. Ooh la la, perfect. And if you have extra and you made your own pattern, don't worry. Now, if you're using somebody else's pattern, I don't know what to say about that. All right, so now we're done with both sides. Now we're ready to sew each side to the middle bodice. Hopefully we have enough seam binding, but it's not looking promising. I'm just gonna wanna go ahead and cut it in half because that's, I mean, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sew this curve to this kind of straight side. All right, it turned out perfect except for one little adjustment. I wish that I had to put this, it, I folded it up this way. I wish I had to folded it down. Um, so I'm gonna take that apart right there, fold it down and restitch it. But in the meantime, I'm also gonna do the other side as well. That's pretty much the hardest part. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the lining so that we have an inner piece that looks just like this. Our front piece, our lining, and the lining does go like this. So this part is towards your body. So technically, I guess this is kind of reversible. And this goes on top like this. Bam. So now that it's together, I feel more confident cutting this piece. It's just because I only have a certain amount of fabric. I didn't want to mess it up. And we're also going to cut a lining piece. All right, so separately, we're going to take each of our pieces and I'm going to take these side pieces and I'm going to sew them to the side. And one right there, one here and one here. Now that we have those done, we can go ahead and sew the outer layer to the lining. But first, I am going to cut off the little bit of excess that we have, make everything smooth. And then I'm going to sew along the top edge and on the sides. And after that's done, you want to add snips along all of your curves. It doesn't matter as much on stretchy material, but even still, regardless of whether you do stretchy or you do a stiffer material, you want to add those little slits. And that's going to, when you turn it right side out, it's going to help your seams to lay nice and flat. But when I turn it right side out, that's what we have. But I do need to turn it back inside out one more time because I need to mark where I want to add boning. I want to add boning in certain places. I wish at the end, I wish I had an added boning in the back, but I'm just going to add it along the front. And I want to leave spaces at the bottom so that I can just slip the boning in and then sew the bottom at the end. So now that I have the marks where the boning is going to go, I can go ahead and sew that bottom part, except for where the boning needs to slip in. And right there, I'm going to leave that open so that I can turn it right side out. And then I'm going to sew, leave a space in between, sew, leave a space in between, go around this curve, leave a space in the middle, and keep going. You understand what I'm saying. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. We are in the middle of a upcycling my Dream Pinterest wardrobe series. I'm actually gonna also do a compilation of all of the upcycling my Dream Pinterest wardrobe so that you can see everything that we did and go ahead and make the wardrobe of your dreams. So definitely hit that subscribe button and we're going back to the video. All right, so here's where we are. I did turn it back inside out and make snips all along the curve because we want those to lay nice and flat. And then I also added some thin interfacing. This is just iron-on interfacing to each side so that my grommets will hold better. Now we can turn this right side out. 
hopefully for the last time. And then we need to draw in our lines for our boning. This is the boning that I have. It is Flexicurve Polyester Boning. There's a bunch of different types of boning, but I just got this. This is Dritz brand. It is a half inch. So we need to make lines that are a little bit more than a half inch. For this, I'm gonna use soap because I do want my lines to go away. I <laughs> don't wanna be able to see them. And the reason I'm just being like super precise about it is because I really do want, I want that boning to fit snug inside of there. All right, so I'm just checking to make sure all my holes are in a place where I can get the boning in and all my lines are there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these lines down and see if I can do it as straight as possible, then add my boning. You wanna cut this boning with paper scissors. I would not cut this with anything, any of your sewing scissors. And you wanna cut it to a length that is slightly less than the length that it's going inside of. And if it is curling up on you, you can use a blow dryer or a heat gun to get it to straighten out. We need to add a stitch like right here so that the boning won't go through and into the bra. Go back. See how I overfolded it so it looks like I have like uh, piping down at the bottom. Uh, pretty smart, pretty smart cookie. All right, our last little pieces. All right, so now we're gonna fold everything inside the way it needs to be. And we're gonna sew a top stitch all along the bottom edge to close off our boning and just to give it a nice finish. All right, so now, lastly, we can go ahead and add our grommets. I'm going to use a button gauge to get these right where they need to be. And I'm just gonna mark it with a pencil. I tried to do it with soap, but this gray is kind of light and it wasn't showing up. I have like one of these industrial grommet things. They're only like 60 bucks, 50 something dollars. And I would highly recommend them. Like doing it with the hammer. I need one. I need to buy the little nibs for it that puts the holes in. Cause yeah, I'm tired of doing that too. Um, but I do have the hole maker. This time I am gonna try to use a smaller one. It is smaller than the actual holes to make sure that it doesn't, like once these are punched, they don't slip out. Cause I've have, been having a big issue with that. So we have whole projects that we've messed up just because of that. So um, I need to put this on the floor in order to hammer it. You just put this on top and hammer it but you have to have it on. I use cardboard and I only do it on a really hard surface. That's the only way it'll really go through the fabric and the only way you'll not damage anything. I tried to do it on a table with a cutting board and messed up my cutting board. So no more messing up stuff. All right, I am back with all of my holes and I've done one successfully. And yes, it is strong. It is strong, it's not going nowhere. So. This is what I did. I used the size down for the holes, um, or you can cut your holes yourself. Just don't cut them exactly the size they need to be. Then I'm just gonna snip, just very, a very shallow snip on each side. Then I'm gonna take the piece that has the bigger uh, edge on it. I've done a grommets a million times, but this is the first time I'm showing you guys this tool. So, the piece with this edge on it, I'm gonna put it on the nib. Then I'm gonna take this piece, the right side needs to go down. We're gonna fit that hole over and it's like really tight, which is what I want. Then I'm gonna add the shallow piece. All right, and we press. It doesn't even require that much uh, strength. And there you go, super strong. All right, so here it is, and that's the way it looks in the front. Lastly, we could just keep this cropped uh, raw, uh, but I think I wanna try to finish it. So let's cut. 
like this. All right, so that means I just need to fold it in half. I'm not gonna connect it, I'm just gonna leave some loose on the side. Fold it in half and sew it to the edge. And then I'm going to, once it's together, I'll fold it over and make a top stitch. All right, so for our very last step, I'm gonna show you something else cool that I recently learned how to do. I have some little cording here that I'm gonna use as the string for the corset as well as new string for the hoodie. I have learned how to put on aglets. Aglets are the things at the end of shoelaces. And this tool right here, you can get it on Amazon. There is a link in the description. Um, has come in so handy because we've been doing a lot of joggers in the office and this particular kit came with a bunch of different sizes and metal finishes which is like oh my gosh chef's kiss and so I'm going to pull out some of the small silver ones but before that here's another cool tool that I'm going to use this is called a botkin and this is another tool that I wish I had known about a long time ago and it's just this metal piece and you pinch your ribbon whatever your string whatever you're trying to get through a small space a hem and you pull the little thing down, make sure it's nice and secure, and it acts like a really, really long bobby pin. I normally use bobby pins, but bobby pins can be kind of short and it takes forever, so this just helps me to do it faster. So I really like that. So now that I have the string through, I can go ahead and cut it and go ahead and add the aglet. And basically what you do is you just put the cording inside the end of the aglet, and then you're gonna squeeze the aglet close as much as you can with your hands. Then you slip it into the tool in the correct size because it has four different sizes. You slip it in so that the open side is going down and then you just squeeze and that's it. Now you have a new aglet so you can replace your shoestrings, replace your hoodie strings, whatever you want. And we're going to do the same thing for our corset, add the aglets and then go ahead and lace up our corset. And we are done. All right, so we learned about piping, we learned about boning, we learned about putting in a lining. We learned a ton in this video. And even if you don't specifically want to make a hoodie corset, all of these techniques are definitely helpful in your sewing journey. So I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, so now let's see how it looks. Dustin for your touch and the way you move, you hypnotize me with your lips. You've got me losing control. Waiting on you to make your move It's all on you, baby To make your move It's all on you, baby Yes, that's it. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, I have been seeing people make these with straps. If you want to make yours with straps, definitely do that. I kind of like it without straps because if I want to use this as an overpiece, which I definitely will um, for the winter, if I want to take this and put it over something, I can definitely do that. You could do that with the straps, but I find a corset over a blouse or something like that without the straps. Definitely looks better to me. Yeah, do whatever you like. Make it exactly how you want it to look just for you. And definitely check out that other video about how to make your own piping. And next week, I will have our challenge video so you can see what the girls came up with for the challenge. And as always, you guys know that we have a ton of other tutorials, upcycle tutorials, from no sew all the way up to the most amazing epic upcycles ever. So definitely check those out and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.